Oh, there was a little delay there. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Barely. Yeah, barely. Ten minutes. So, yeah. Wow, you're late. Late? Yeah. It's like hour. Yeah. Two hours. It's not Where two hours been? late. Hour late. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Family Jewels. Today we're talking about appraisals, the different types of appraisals, and the importance of getting them. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you should have them, and there's several different types. So oh, I thought you were going to say there's a lot of reasons not to have them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there, there's always a lot of reasons to have them. So uh, a lot of it is just uh, basically for your protection of basically the pieces that you have and also knowing what you've got so i don't know about the protection thing i guess it'd be one of those things where well, you've got to have it for like insurance right yeah but the appraisal's not going to protect you all that much well yes and no mm. but anyway we're going to talk about the different appraisals um the primary one that we're going to talk about is insurance appraisal uh, but you also have resale and estate and stuff like that. So there's different variants on that, but uh, we've been having a lot of people asking about appraisals lately and having different uh, motives of why they're getting that appraisal. And so what we're going to talk about today is to kind of clarify what those are, what they're going to be used for, and how we basically issue them. I guess you could say. So, um, probably cover the simple ones first, which is going to be like the estate and the resale appraisals. And what's what's kind of amazing, I guess, there's a possibility that value-wise of the piece could possibly be the same in all three appraisals. That doesn't happen most of the time, but there's a possibility of that happening. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, uh, like uh, we'll just say the resale appraisal. Now well, let's do the estate appraisal. Estate appraisal, a lot of times, um, what ends up happening is it's almost a, a time consideration. Um, there's a possibility that an estate has to be settled and so you need to know. Yeah, so many days to do that or, about, or weeks to well, do it's, that it's, settlement. It's going, yeah. It's, <laughs> It's going to be divided up or it's going to be sold or something like that. Yeah. So that time element is factored in. Factored into that. Right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these are based on what a willing seller and a willing buyer would agree on. Yep. Uh, but the time factor kind of enters into that to some degree. Yeah. The other really thing does. would be sometimes the condition of the piece. Mm hmm. Um, the other thing would be like provenance, um, which, you know, who's owned the piece before, maybe how old the piece is. Uh, Who made it. Yeah, historical value. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things that enter into, the, into that, all of those appraisals, but maybe especially the estate and resale ones. Right. Yeah. So on, a, on an estate one, we're... We, we actually have to take into consideration the uh, condition of that piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing would be is an estate is a little more time sensitive than what a replacement or an insurance would be. Yeah. And kind of a whole different um, mindset of what, what that appraisal is. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So we we charge the same as far as doing the appraisal and we do the same thing for the appraisal but the mythology that we go through to figure out the value is totally different yeah um yeah so you know some people come in and they'll have a, an insurance appraisal and they want an estate appraisal done uh actually we almost have to do Start some, completely over to some degree <laughs> over because uh, we're evaluating because the the big difference between these not only is going to be po potentially price, but what we're considering with with the retail or with the resale and the estate we have to consider 
yeah, like you said, the mm-hmm. condition of the piece, if it's in disrepair, if stones are chipped, if there's some discoloring, the sizes of the pieces, how much wear is there, stuff like that, which we don't take into consideration per se with a or with an insurance appraisal right. that is going to be for a replacement of like kind and quality. So it's there are a bunch of factors there that yeah we do have to take into consideration based on what type of appraisal we're going to be doing. Right. And for sure the the resale in a state could be very similar mm-hmm. in, in value uh, but not necessarily. Yeah, because if you have an estate one that, say, when this is completed, they have, you know, by a court order or whatever, it has to be sold out within so many days. Or divided up. Or divided up, then, yeah, it's got to be done in such a way that it's a realistic value that they can expect to get within a certain time frame, whereas a resale one may be, you know, this is what, on the best day what you could expect to get from a willing well, buyer. Well, it could be where, you know, we don't know this, but say it's 24 hours or maybe it's a week or maybe it's a month or, yeah. um, you know. It's obviously harder to sell at a higher price. Right. And yeah. then again, you have to take into consideration on both of those condition of the piece. To, to some degree, we do that on an insurance or replacement appraisal, but most of the time those problems or issues that we'd have on an insurance replacement are noted. You know? Yeah. Say say there's a, a crack in the shank or, you know, a, a prong is missing or you've got a chipped stone or something. Yeah. That's actually listed on there, but to some degree that is not, doesn't make the piece less expensive because what we're going to do is go in there that's going to be replaced with like kind and and quality. Yeah, and something else that gets factored in with um, with an estate or resale is also basically the community in which it's going to be sold to. You know, if you've got mm-hmm. if you've got a piece that's got you know high prominence that may go to auction at an auction house somewhere, Christie's or Sotheby's, Christie's or, something. or Sotheby's, something like that, you have a whole different atmosphere in which that piece is going to get sold, so you can expect to get a higher price for it. Right. Because now you've got a concentrated buying group that is specifically there for that type of piece, whereas if you're just going to go sell it at an estate sale, you know, most likely you're going to have a very wide range of buyers that aren't necessarily looking for that piece. So that does have to come into consideration as well. Whereas the insurance appraisal is not going to take that into consideration. It might, uh, it, well, with, it may be the provenance. Yeah, but if it's general purpose, right. general items, um, it's probably not going to have any of that considered in there because we're we're basically looking at it as replacing basically with a new piece, like kind and quality. The, <clears throat> I guess, the and we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but um, Colton brought up something that, that probably should be discussed. There are going to be um, manufacturers of jewelry that are going to get more consideration, I guess I'll say. Yeah. Um, you know, say Van Cleef and Arpels or Cartier or... Bugari or Harry Winston or, or even Oscar Tiffany's Heyman or yeah. you know those those people are going to carry a, a premium or yeah uh, more because those manufacturers are noted for finer quality and yeah you know there are going to be people out there that are going to try to duplicate the piece but for the most part that's, I'm going to say, a lot of times not quite possible. Yeah. And actually that name is going to carry a little bit more. It's kind of like uh, you can buy a, a ruby that you don't know where it came from, or you can buy a Burmese ruby. And there's going to be a lot of price difference, even if they look the same. Right, right. So yeah. it's kind of the kind of the same deal. So that's something that we have to take into consideration. consideration. And that actually applies for all three right. types of appraisals. Right. Um, you know, especially for insurance ones, we want to note that because 
you know, we've had instances where we've had people that's had something either lost or stolen that was of that kind of provenance where it had a, a high-end manufacturer make that piece and the insurance goes to replace it with a like kind and quality and then they have it made by Jim Bob somewhere and you know wherever and it's not the, it's not the same thing um, that's basically like you know saying okay well I'm gonna insure my Bentley and it gets stolen, so you're gonna replace it with a Chrysler 300. Yeah. They look they look similar. They got they're both cars. They both have engines, kind of thing. But it's not the same thing. Right. And so, if we can note that, we definitely want to do that, especially on an insurance appraisal, to make sure that whenever something, if something happens, that it's getting replaced accurately. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're going to pay a premium on an insurance policy like that, you definitely want to make sure that, you know, you're going to get what you're insuring. Right. And so uh, being as specific as possible on those appraisals is key, and that's something that we definitely do here uh, in our store. We, we get very specific. Um, we want to be as close as possible in absolutely every aspect and every element of that appraisal. But a, but a lot of things are like weights, you know, we have to estimate. We don't remove stones to, to do unless unless the customer requests, requests. that to be done. Yeah. Um, Which with large stones, usually that's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we don't. And, and we would actually charge extra to do that because yeah. a lot of times when we take a stone out, we're going to have to probably do some repair work to get it back in. Yeah. Um, not that we're not trying to be careful when we take it out, but it's just one of those risks. Yeah. Very, very seldom do you not do some some kind of yeah thing that needs to be fixed or whatever. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> your whenever we whenever we do an appraisal. Uh, to some degree, the the mountings that gemstones are in are going to hinder uh, some of the stuff that we're basically looking for. There's a possibility of hiding inclusions under prongs. Uh, color grading of diamonds gets to be a little more difficult yeah. depending on the settings. Yeah. You know, if you get into four, even some of stone identification can be a little yeah. bit more difficult. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we can't get a, a refractive index or an RI number off of that stone by doing a, a test on it, um, you know, it may get a little bit more difficult identifying some of those. Not that we can't do it, yeah, it's, <laughs> but it does get, make it more difficult. Maybe it's to more sometimes to the WAG method. It, it may be one of those things if we can't do that, we have to ask to possibly remove that stone. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, what, what we're wanting to really discuss here is the importance of these uh, as well as those differences. So when somebody's coming in and asking for an appraisal, really uh, what we're needing to know is not so much what the piece is that's being appraised, but what the appraisal is going to be used for. And so if it's an estate sale or that piece is going, uh, you're looking to get a value on what you should expect to sell this piece for, then we're going to be looking at either an estate or a resale appraisal. Now, if it's something where you're wanting to insure it, get it insured, get it protected uh, as a writer on homeowners or buy a separate policy for it, then we're going to have to do a totally different appraisal. And either way, we're going to try and get as much detail as possible in those. And the big importance, I guess, it would really be placed on those insurance appraisals. Mm. Because you know we want we want you to be protected with the pieces that you've got. Because kind of rule of thumb is your homeowners or renters policies will will stop at fifteen hundred. They're kind of a blanket policy that you know. Yeah, that, you know, and I, it kind of varies, yeah. you know, insurance to insurance. But for the most part, around fifteen hundred dollars, if it's if it's got a value over that, it probably needs to be listed separately as a rider. Or a separate policy altogether needs to be taken out. And there are um, companies out there that do uh, basically jewelry insurance 
for individual items and uh, they're actually really really affordable but those appraisals are what is going to basically guarantee for you that you've got your piece properly insured right and that if there is a claim that it's done it's done properly and claimed properly because otherwise if for, for the most part on a, on an insurance appraisal you know you're gonna buy a lot of times you're gonna buy this from uh, an insurance agent and he's pretty much selling a what a piece of paper or a policy that covers mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and if you have a loss you're, you're basically not gonna deal with him you know, yeah. you may submit the claim to him but they're gonna have a claim department that's gonna process that. process that yeah and the whole idea behind that claim department is to pay or to do as little financially as they can get away with kind of yeah so what we're saying is you need to have a really good description <clears throat> of your piece of jewelry so that you cut down that possibility of room of error right yeah, yeah. room of error <laughs> And yeah. a good and a good example of that is one of the customers that we had that had a piece stolen, um, and we were able to actually have on their appraisal who the manufacturer was, a serial number for that piece, and because of how good the description was, they actually the insurance attempted to replace with a like kind and quality that was nowhere near what they were insured. Or what they had insured and was paying a premium for and so whenever it came came down to them fighting the insurance to get the piece properly replaced it was a much easier fight because they had on paper and in their policy that serial number and manufacturer so when the insurance tried to replace it by having some Jim whoever Jim, Jim Bob again <laughs> Jim Bob replaced that piece and make that piece and was not up to par with that specific manufacturer um, it was really easy uh, to argue that it was not a like kind in quality right. and so because of that they got the piece replaced accurately and got exactly what it was that was stolen and Without that, if you get really vague appraisals, or uh, say you've got you've got somebody that uh, doesn't know how to properly grade stones or identify gemstones, then some of that can get you know, almost too vague for them to really claim properly, and so you end up with a piece that's nothing like what you're paying to insure. So and the the other thing you somewhat need to understand is for the most part the option of what what's going to be done with that insurance claim doesn't lay with you the policyholder yeah. it's the insurance company is the one that has option of what they're going to do yeah so the fewer options that you give them <laughs> the the more likely you are to get what it is that you're paying to insure right because in that case with that with that piece that was stolen you know at that point had we not had those numbers on there and the manufacturer listed um, then they would have had to stick with that piece that was made for them that was subpar and they had they would have had no argument um, they basically would have gotten a a cheap version of what they were insuring because it was the ins it was up to the insurance to replace it and not the customer that held the policy so that is very vital that that gets uh, yeah that that we have proper information on there and as much and as detailed information on there as possible uh, the other thing is to especially with insurance I guess really only with insurance ones right um, they do need to be updated about every three years so if you currently have a policy and you have an appraisal I'm on gonna it I'm going to say that probably most of those if you're doing with insurance company I would say two years is probably yeah three years is probably max yeah I'd say you're pushing it there at three yeah 
the other the other big thing that a lot of a lot of people out there don't do when they're doing appraisals is take good photographs of those pieces. Um, that's something that is is very important. There's several out there that will do an appraisal with no pictures, and so you may have a ruby a ruby and diamond ring that you really like the design of, but if they don't have a photo of that ring and they go to do, do a like kind and quality deal, you may end up with something totally different right. from what you were actually <clears throat> insuring. So making sure that whenever you do go to get an appraisal, uh, when you do that, make sure that you're going to somebody reputable that is qualified to do that and that it is very detailed and accurate. Um, accuracy could probably be a little bit more difficult for the average person to verify, I guess. Uh, so that's why you really want to make sure that whoever's doing that appraisal really knows what they're doing. But Well, I guess the other thing would be is, you know, when you're saying an accurate appraisal, and, and I've always said that value wise if I get within 20% high or low I've done a good appraisal yeah well when you figure accuracy there that 40% you know total there doesn't sound like I'm overly accurate but um, but that's still a lot more accurate than what a lot a yeah. lot of those appraisals yeah it's are. just you just need to get as good a description of that piece by having it appraised as you can yeah that's that's where you cut down a lot of the the problems with replacement or a possibly you know I don't know that many of them cash out anymore um, I think most yeah. of them are gonna do try replacement. To replacement yeah yeah so they are very important especially for those pieces that you've got that are like we said fifteen hundred dollars or higher um, check with your insurance agent if you want to put that on your homeowners or renters policies. Wow, that was bright. <laughs> um, the other thing is too is there are uh, there's a few companies out there that, like we mentioned, do individual policies just for jewelry. And if you guys would like more information on those, you can contact us here at Suzanne's. Our number is three six one nine nine one seven five six five, or you can stop by here at. 4226 South Alameda in the Town and Country Shopping Center right here in Corpus Christi. Or you can visit us online at suzannes-jewelers.com or send us a message through our Facebook. Wow, you remember all that stuff. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, after three years of doing this, yeah. we, ought to, we ought to have this down by now. Yeah. So, anyway, they are very important. We definitely encourage you guys to get appraisals. If you already have them, get them updated and make sure that you've got your coverage uh, well, up and, to par. Well, and that's, you need an appraisal for sure if you have insurance. Yeah. Um, if you don't have insurance, then then it's kind of an ego thing, because, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, for the most part, you just need to get that appraisal for if you're gonna resale a piece, possibly, or if it's an estate, or if it's going to be insured. Yeah. Um, and that other, one other thing before we get off here, the, you need to find out what that coverage, say you're doing an insurance appraisal, you need to find out what all that covers. Yeah. And one that I bring up that some policies don't cover is what's called mysterious disappearance. So you can't prove that it's been it's like stolen, it but it's lost. Yeah. There are some companies that don't cover that. And the other thing is there are also insurance companies that will also cover repair or damage. Yeah. So say you get, you know, hopefully you don't do this, but say you get your uh, hand caught in the door and it damages a ring, you know, it breaks the shank or you lose a prong or something like that. There are policies, insurance policies out there that also cover that risk. Yeah. So just... Yeah. Kind of do do your shopping if you're doing the insurance, and then I'm sure somewhere along the line they're going to require a, an appraisal. Yeah, but if you guys do have any other questions at all, uh, feel free to contact us, and we'd be more than happy to answer those for you. We do have recommendations for different policies and stuff like that, um, depending on what it is that you're insuring. 
and uh, we definitely can do the appraisals for you. So if you guys have pieces that you're needing done, feel free to bring them by and we can evaluate those for you and get appraisals to you. So in the meantime, enjoy you guys' week and uh, we will see you next week right here on Facebook. Thank you.